status. Well, a short, sweet amateur boxing career ends tomorrow in Baltimore when Sugar Ray Leonard, the Olympic gold medalist, turns pro in a six-round junior welterweight bout. Leonard's manager, the veteran Angelo Dundee, told Bernard Shaw, there's more than talent going for Sugar Ray. Charisma is real. Uh, the people react to him. I haven't seen a young kid like this draw this many people every day, uh, realistically, in uh, all the time I've been in boxing. And I think it's fantastic the way the fans have taken to him. Not even Muhammad Ali, whom Dundee has been training all these years, drew a thousand or so people to his workouts before he made his pro debut. But that's what Sugar Ray Leonard's been doing in Baltimore every day. Leonard hasn't fought in six months, but the impression he left as he battled his way to the Olympic gold medal in the light welterweight division remains. People also remember that he said in Montreal he would never turn pro. This was an obligation I had owed to my family because my mother and father worked so hard to support the family. I want to become the world champion, but mainly help my family out. Has Muhammad Ali meant anything to you? Well, mentally, yes, because I feel that Ali has uh, shown everyone that whatever he says he wants to do, he can do it if he puts his mind and body to work. He's shown me that you can achieve any goal in life if you set your mind for it. Tomorrow, Leonard will fight professionally for the first time, a six-rounder against Luis the Bull Vega. And afterwards, the man from Palmer Park, Maryland, will have a better idea of what his future holds. Bernard Shaw, CBS News, Baltimore. Yeah. yeah, we beat him up. Joey. <laughs> we beat him up. I'm scared of that kid. 
this. Two, and you take a little slide right. Okay. Go right in the end. Oh, okay, look, I said, I don't go right to the guy. I don't move, move, up. move over. All right, but then when you go in, I like can go just right to the guy. Just move over. Just okay. Give me one step. Give me one little step. Here it comes. Yep. Yeah. Because I don't pull it now. It's right. too good. And after the right hand beat, you have another shot coming. You step, bam, yeah. if you don't do no more. Okay. Bam, yeah. yeah. boom. Come right back. Yeah. Build the right hand there. Right on the back. Huh? That right on the back. Go ahead and get through and give me another shot.
That's the first thing. Really, Dick, he really looks good. He's looking much stronger and more smarter in the ring. Whereas before, maybe he would take a punch, now he's slipping a punch to give some more out. But he really looks good. Does it feel like he's never been away? Well, it was there. You could see that he had been away for a while when we first started working out in January. But now that he's coming for a few weeks, he had time to really adjust, readjust himself. We got used to getting punched again, really. That's the toughest job, getting back uh, hit again after two years left. But he's really come a long ways. He's really sharp. That's why we're cutting him short. Are you worried about him at all? Not at all. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I really pitied the first couple of guys that faced a sugar and then I have to come back like this. Because it really is a big test for him also. If you had to pick one reason why he's back fighting, what's the one main reason? It's age 27 years old. What's, what's 27 years old to do when you tell me you can get up in the morning and afternoon? You wouldn't mind that, would you? No. <laughs> I wouldn't. You wouldn't either. But, uh, you know, it's different in the style. Uh, people nowadays, you know, he was 27 years old and nothing to do, so he come comes back and do what he's been doing all his life. I always say that uh, the earlier they start, the longer they last. That's why when a kid they just start boxing real early, it's tough for them to come out early. They retire and come back, retire and come back. But you take a guy like a Kenny Norton, where he started late, he can leave the game and forget about it because he didn't grow up with it. I'm Ali and Skeeter McClure. Well, Skeeter McClure is a psychologist now, and he's got his office about 10 miles from here. No kidding. He's a PhD. I'm all set. When Ray first started thinking about coming back, did you give him any advice? I was the last guy that thought he would come back. Last guy in the world that thought he would come back. Because I felt he was doing so well at what he was doing with the commentary and the, you know, the advertising, the everything he was doing was so great. Uh, so I figured it would fill the void. But I learned an object lesson in life. Nothing takes a place of being the best at what you do. When he did decide, did you advise against it at all? Oh no, I don't think it, uh, it, I don't think we had, a human being has a right to tell another human being what to do with his life. Uh, to me, the kid wants to do it, and he's doing it for Sugar Ray Leonard, nobody else. Are you worried at all about him? 
Well, you don't worry. You can't uh, get in the position where you worry, Dick, because then when you get to where you'll be a warrior, then you should stop working with fighters. You got to be uh, basic and be ready and prepare for anything that might happen. If you be concerned, uh, do certain things to protect, like get him in the best shape he's ever been in. Because you remember one little thing is that you haven't seen the best of Sugar Ray Leonard. Is he as good as before the layoff? He's going to be better. He figures to be better. He's got to be as good as before the layoff to beat the guy he's fighting. Because in Kevin Howard, he's fighting a tough guy, a strong guy. Uh, he don't tip over that easy. He'll be there for 10. Uh, all the answers will be out May 11. When Ali took his layoff, which was not his choice, was he as good when he came back? Oh, no. It took a long time. You're talking about a heavyweight and a welterweight. You're talking about a guy, uh, Ali does nothing when he's not fighting. I mean, his only sport was boxing. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard bounces the basketball pretty good. He runs pretty good, stays in pretty good condition. Uh, coming back, we had to get the rust off the guy. We've been working with little guys, get his quickness up again, uh, reflexes being sharp. He's going to be ready. How good does it feel to you to be back with this? It's dynamite. It's created excitement. People are talking boxing again because this guy is one of the, the old breed. I can say that physically and mean that re with reality because he's good out of the ring as well as he is in the ring. You are a quick guy. We've been doing this for a while. Great fun. It is so much fun. You know, we thought about it down here because it was so, I mean, it was so difficult for one age to, you know, I didn't yeah. get pregnant. I just thought it was a problem with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, we, we had uh, thoughts of adopting a kid. In fact, she, she, uh, what they call this, a sponsor? She sponsored really? some kid. But, I don't know exactly what, where. What, okay, I, I had four kids of my own before we adopted one, and there's absolutely no difference I know. the way you feel. I mean, yeah. just exactly. Now I'll start with the other thing. First thing is just, how do you feel? I feel great, Dick. Um, I guess since the postponement, you know, people thought that I had second thoughts about resuming my career. I think it was more of a recess. I had a chance to really get into myself and uh, evaluate what exactly was take, about to take place and uh, what could transpire from my initial return to the ring. I reached the conclusion that I'll be successful. I feel very, I feel in tip-top shape. I've used small guys to. Uh, Eliminate the ring rust, which is evident of two years layoff, and I, I'm looking forward to the fight. Do you think that after the two-year layoff, the trainers say you can be better? Can you be as good or better? Well, I'm glad they have that that, that amount of confidence. I had the same thing. I'm very optimistic that uh, through my uh, daily routine of training, I think I honestly feel that I will get better. I feel stronger. I feel that I'm more knowledgeable now because. Looking from the outside in, you have more of an opportunity to become more strategic and more technical. And I think that it's been a great opportunity and a rest period for me for those two years. What is the one main reason that you're back in the room? Well, there was uh, somewhat of a misconception. I think it, it's my fault that that happened. I said that I was, I felt that I was denied history. Um, I think that. I, as myself as an athlete, that something was taken, from, was taken away from me. My whole my life it was not totally fulfilled. I was knocked down by an injury, Dick, and I couldn't just con continue to live with that. If all athletes had retired from injuries, we wouldn't have sports. And I felt that, I reached the conclusion that I, my injury was correct. I have a second chance to resume what I love, what has made me the individual that I am today. So I don't think people are being fair of trying to knock me for what I'm doing. I thank them for their concern and for them looking out for me or think they're looking out for me. But I'm doing something that I love and I'm taking every precautionary measure to minimize risk factors. Is it also the thing that you're doing what you do better than anything else? Well, I can't honestly say that. I think that boxing uh, has given me uh, quite naturally more exposure, more recognition and better funds than any other profession I've been in, involved in. But I just feel that boxing for now is primary. I think once I become content uh, after my professional career in the ring, then I will pursue something which is broadcasting and the theatrical world. I think I can be just as superb and supreme in those professions also. Do you really, you know, I'm not saying that you're not good, but those, you know, people prepare all their lives for the stage and for things like that. 
And this thing, you're the absolute best at. Do you really think you can be the absolute best at those also? I watch it all the time. That guy's better than you. <laughs> oh, that's easy. <laughs> well, I'm talking about no. the tough ones. Well, the thing is, you have to apply yourself and understand there's a, a great deal of pressure because of, of knowing the technical ends of the industry. Uh, but what I'm saying, I want to do what I do best now. Because I'm young enough to do it. I'm 27. I'm taking full advantage of my youth. Um, and as time, you know, as time goes by, then I will continue to pursue uh, the other ends of, uh, of a different career. How about the, the place in history? I mean, you, you, you know, maybe that wasn't the way you wanted to phrase it, being denied history. But obviously, you already have a place in history. But this way, you can get a, a stronger place. Is that part of the drive? Well, I think there are people, Chris, that's going to make their own judgment. I mean, people are going to put you or categorize you where they want you, whether it's with the Arlies or uh, the, the Joe Lewis, Marciano. They're going to put you where they want to put you. Uh, my major uh, concern and, and reason is uh, resume my career and finishing, finishing what I want to finish. It's not financial at all, is it? No, I wouldn't. You know, people, they say, well, Ray, you have all the money in the world, and you fight for the money? I said, no. If I was fighting for the money, I would fight um, uh, Hagler. Why make a million dollars or two million dollars when I can make 30, 40, 50 million? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, financially, you're set. You don't have to worry about that. Internal revenue still makes checks for me. <laughs> okay, but eventually, you do want to fight Hagler, too. That would agree on my resume. I think that a, a Hagler and another fight would be one of the ultimates and would be a, totally a great extravaganza, one of the biggest fights I feel in history. It's one of the fights that people see as the inevitable matchup between uh, Hagler and Sugar Ray, and I would like to see that happen one day. You have a child who's not yet born who may not see you fight. You may just fight three or four years, and the child may not go to those fights. What would you like people to walk up to that child and say about you 15, 20 years from now. Your, your, your father was a better broadcaster than he was a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, as a boxer, uh, you've done things already that no one has ever done. Do you want to just set records that, that no one can approach? I think records are made to be broken, Dick. I, think there, I don't think there are too many records that won't be broken. But I, I just like to make a mark, and I think I've made a mark. I feel that I've made a mark in boxing. Uh, and a pretty good mark, uh, the unification of the welterweight crown um, to win a second title, junior middleweight. I think I've done pretty well, but um, it's all there's always room for improvement, and there's always room to create even a much more sturdier foundation. The first time you got hit hard since you came back, how did that feel? It didn't feel too good. You know, women used to ask me all the time. They said, "Well, sure, do you have to be used to getting hit in the face?" And I. I it was so funny, I would laugh, but in all honesty, you really have to get used to getting hit in the face. For two years, the guy used makeup and I, you know, was not punched around. Your skin has to get tough again. It really has to get tough. And um, I found that one of the most difficult uh, parts of training, getting used to getting punched. And are you used to it now? I'm used to it now. Um, I don't particularly care for it, but I'm used to it. And I think that the use of using these little guys, I use smaller weights. Uh, light up uh, sparring partners, and they've helped me out tremendously. You're growing, you're getting bigger up here. Will you be a full-fledged middleweight within a year? I, I envision myself uh, in that ballpark. I don't see any way that I couldn't make 157 to fight as a middleweight. I think I am, my weight fluctuates well enough to fight from welterweight to middleweight. What do you want to tell the people who are worried about you, who, who, who you know, say, oh, he shouldn't fight, we don't want to see him get hurt? What do you want to tell those people? The only thing I can tell them, Dick, is the fact that, thanks for the concern, I reassure them that I am okay, I've been uh, given the okay, and uh, I will be victorious. How victorious? So how do you expect to be in the ring for the first fight? Scared. Really scared. It's, uh, it's stage fright, cold feet. It's, it's as though when an entertainer makes his debut, I anticipate these these feelings, these symptoms, and uh, I've been very, very uh, composed throughout my years in the ring. But I'm very, I'm interested to see how we react. When will the butterflies go away? First punch. <laughs> that you First throw or catch? <laughs> Hopefully when I throw. <laughs> okay, Jake, thank you much. Good luck. Thanks, good luck.
I'm going to try to get back up to the pipe, but if not, I'm going to sit over and watch. Okay, Jake, thanks, buddy. Stay upstairs. This one will go all the way, and we're going to have to have a decision, and then Leonard may have pulled it out with a 15th round. Leonard, bombing away. Mm. June 20th, 1980, Sugar Ray Leonard going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roberta Duran for Leonard's WBC welterweight title. Duran won the fight and the title in a 15-round decision. Five months later came the rematch with its unforgettable eighth round, Leonard getting his title back when Duran quit, saying, no mas, no mas, no more. But there will be one more fight, number three, coming up in November, and Roberta Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard join us this morning with Louis DeCubis to help us uh, do some translating here. Good morning. I first want to know from uh, uh, Mr. Duran, no mas nine years ago, why go back in the ring with this guy? Uh, Roberto, después de no más, hace nueve, nueve años, ¿por qué regresar al ring otra vez con Sugar Ray Leonard? Porque yo siempre tuve la esperanza de que él me diera la oportunidad a mí. He always hoped that Sugar Ray Leonard would give him the, the opportunity again. Has he been haunted by no más? ¿Tú crees que eso te ha dañado a ti, el no más? Puede ser. Maybe it has. Maybe. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is there animosity there? Is there bad feeling there? ¿Tú te sientes mal? ¿Hay mala sangre? No. No. no bad feeling. No bad feeling. We'll see in the ring, I guess. Why? Why this fight? Why Duran? Well, if, uh, for a little historical perspective, Harry, Duran was the only guy that beat me throughout my career. And then the second encounter, uh, I just felt I was deprived of a great accomplishment because of the bizarre ending. And uh, I've always thought about, you know, fighting Duran again. Mm -hmm. But the perception of the public because of the ending was the fact that it was only a setup for a third encounter. But, um, you know, thank God Duran has come back and fought magnificently and fought an impressive win over Aaron Barkley and mm -hmm. uh, redeemed himself. Are you a little afraid of that? I mean, Aaron Barkley is a real fighter. This, 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 could, be, this could be serious world-class danger here. Well, it will be. In fact, the matter is, uh, you know, here's an opportunity for both of us to once again get back into the ring to prove who's the best. Mm -hmm. The, uh, what, is, what does this fight mean to Roberto? What significa esta pelea para ti, Roberto? Significa mucho para mí. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to him. Una pelea que he esperado toda la vida. He's waited all his life, the last nine years for this fight. 38 years old, though. Is he as good as he was nine years ago? Con 38 años, ¿tú crees que sea tan bueno como antes? Bueno, ya lo veremos. We will see. We'll see. The, because uh, it, it would seem to me it has to be in here someplace. If, if at 38 years old you're going to go back in the ring with, uh, with Sugar Ray. Él piensa que a los 38 años tiene que salir de aquí, del estómago. Tiene que salir de adentro. ¿Sale qué? Tú sabes, las la ganas de volver a pelear otra vez. Hace rato, dile. He says, yeah, a long time. He's, he's waiting, yeah. so he's, he's, he's dying to get back in the ring. Can people... The fight game has gotten so weird. There are so many divisions there. Are, who knows? I mean, everybody walking around the street has some kind of crown uh, from some division of some, some boxing federation. Can people take this seriously, or is this uh, an, an old-timers fight? Well, I don't particularly agree with the old-timers fight, Harry, <laughs> but I honestly believe from a, a marketable and credibility standpoint, the fact that Roberto Duran is Roberto Duran, and I'm Ray Leonard, I think it's a matter of personalities. It goes beyond being world champions. I think that Duran had such an enormous following, and I had the same thing, mm -hmm. which was indicative with the Tommy Hearns fight, Lalonde fight. In fact, this fight here, is a crossroad for me because of my last performance. I wasn't particularly pleased with that performance. Tom Hearns fought a magnificent fight, but I don't know who the guy was that he was fighting. Hmm. But you I didn't recognize out, yourself. Well, I tell you what, I didn't. It's not the same uh, genes, believe me. But uh, one thing about it, uh, this fight here is uh, is a measuring stick for me. Yeah. Do you? 
you say it's a measuring stick and you say it's important to you, that a lot of people wonder if Sugar Ray fights for sport or does he fight for money? Well, early in, in the early stages of my career, it was for financial reasons, no question about that. I'm a businessman too, and uh, it's very productive. But uh, they tell me how much money I have, and I read about how much money I have. I never read about how much taxes I pay, but um, this is a love and also it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's both. It's both. Sugar Ray, Roberta, thank you. Louis de Cubis, thanks for helping us out yeah. this morning. Good luck to you, and uh, sometime in November, right? Yes. We'll see. 17 minutes before the hour. Faith? Next, Peter Noon. He is no longer a hermit. <laughs>